Hello, this is ReedFreak7, and welcome back to a Minecraft Bedrock Edition tutorial. It's been a little while. So today's video is going to be focusing on, uh, whoops, is going to be focusing on this wireless transmitter and receiver system that I have been working on a little bit recently, and you may recognize it from one of my earlier videos. Uh, I have been doing a few updates to greatly improve this system. So, uh, the updated section is this back piece here, and what this does is basically gives it a cooldown, which allows the system to make sure that it won't be susceptible to uh, triggering multiple times from a signal that may have repeating uh, patterns within it, which was something that the previous system was susceptible to, and it was a fairly large issue with it. If you are interested in the original tutorial, I will leave a link, though I am going to be redoing that tutorial to make it a little bit better and easier to follow. So the basic principle of this system is that burnout clocks in Bedrock are buggy, as could be expected from Minecraft Bedrock. So to build a burnout clock, you'll make this place a block with torches on either side a redstone dust on top and a block on top of either of those both of those torches and that makes a burnout clock so to trigger that burnout clock we I am using four pistons in rapid succession uh, one tick apart to be exact for whatever reason the block lag or entity lag or whatever the case is it causes this clock to pause whenever this is triggered. Sorry. You see how the clock pauses? That is the principle that is being used for the system that allows me to detect whenever those four pistons are triggered and allows this system to send a wireless signal that can then be decoded. So let's jump into the tutorial. So we will start out with the wireless transmitter. So this part is not directional, so it does not matter which orientation you build this in. And as far as I know, it doesn't need to be chunk aligned or anything wacky like that. So to start out, we're going to place nine blocks. And on each of these blocks, we are going to place redstone dust. On the right side, we are going to build out one block and build seven blocks across. And on every other block, we are going to place another block. On top of each of these blocks, we are going to place a piston facing up. And between each of these, we are going to place a redstone repeater on one tick and uh, fill in this just with a redstone dust. Now, in front of each of these redstone blocks, uh, redstone dust, sorry, we are going to be placing an observer that is facing up, like so. So nine of these. So now we are going to take sticky pistons, eight to be exact. We're going to come out a couple of blocks like that, so we have the sticky piston somewhat diagonal. We're going to skip that first observer and we're going to build out eight sticky pistons like so. Then on the front of each of these sticky pistons we're going to place a solid block. Now in front of these, uh, the back of these sticky pistons we're going to place a solid block. On the front of each of these solid blocks we're just going to place a lever and on top of these blocks, I'm going to place redstone lamps. These aren't necessary, they just kind of make it easier to see what is on and what's off. Now on top of each of these observers, we're going to place a repeater on four ticks. It has to be four ticks or this will not work. The maximum speed that this system can transmit a bit of information is every four redstone ticks. 
then we are also going to place a block underneath this first observer as we always want this observer to send a pulse to the receiver as it is the timing pulse and it allows the whole system to make sure it only triggers once for a certain code. Now on the end we're going to place a block like so and two more blocks like that. Now we're going to take a comparator and two redstone dust like that. We're going to take stairs and place them facing towards the comparator like that and we are going to place a that's a dropper we are going to place a dispenser facing down into the staircase now on each side of the staircase we're going to place a sign uh, whoops sorry there we go and this is just going to block the water from the dispenser and make sure that it doesn't go everywhere so that water is in and lastly for uh, this part of the system uh, I didn't mean to put those in there we are going to place a button on the front of the dropper and this is it for the transmitter system and you can program in whatever code you want using these levers now we are going to build the receiver system and this part is a lot more exact so make sure you follow fairly closely so you're going to take a few blocks uh, first of all you're going to find the negative Z or sorry negative X direction for me that is this direction I've tested that previously uh, you can show turn on show uh, coordinates in settings and that will show up on your screen and you can kind of walk around and find which way is negative X so we're taking a torch on either of those and a redstone dust on top making our burnout clock it does have to be built in this orientation for this to work reliably now the rest of the system isn't orientation dependent I'm going to build it this way uh, but you could build out the system facing really any direction you want as long as it is using this specific torch here as an output so next I'm going to build a small pulse extender like so and on this end I am going to place a comparator coming out of that block from the pulse extender and a comparator running into that comparator make sure this comparator is set to to compare mode rather than subtract mode or the system will not work now we're going to take a chest and this is going to be filled up with 20 unstackable items so now that there are 20 items in this chest 20 unstackable items you're going to place a block on the end of this comparator with a torch and you can see that this torch turns off when this system is triggered by the transmitter you will see that that torch turns on briefly and that indicates that it is receiving signals correctly now we are going to place a repeater with four ticks out of that a block until and repeat that until you have eight blocks now at the end here we are going to place a transparent block it must be transparent or it will power the normal piston that we are going to put right here uh, that just can stay whatever that I didn't mean to break it then we're going to break out blocks here here and here and place redstone dust on those two and a repeater on the last block here and this repeater should be on four ticks now I'm going to place a block on top of that piston we are going to place a repeater on three ticks out of that with a block and a redstone torch facing back next we are going to build out a repeater uh, six repeaters actually all on four ticks in this direction and then we're going to place two redstone dust and five more repeaters on four ticks facing back the opposite direction now we're going to place a block here 
and a block of your choice. I'm just going to use glass so it's easier to see what's going on. And then we are going to place a normal piston facing down, not a sticky piston, and a redstone dust on top of each of these two blocks so that it runs into the piston. Now we're going to place a redstone line in front of all of these blocks, like so. And that is going to act as our combination, or part of our combination. Now you're going to want to actually program in whatever combination you're wanting to use. So I'm going to use on, off, on, on, off, off, on, off. And then on each on, you're placing a redstone torch on each off, a redstone repeater on one tick I should add just to match the timings of the redstone torch because it takes one tick for a redstone torch to turn off now I'm just going to build a quick little output from this system I'm doing it in the middle to make sure that the signal strength doesn't run out on either end as it needs to make sure that this entire redstone line is off and if I have it at just one end it may not detect quite everything correctly so I'm doing it from the middle for that reason. And that's also why I'm not going much larger than 8 bits. Also, you don't need anything more than 8 bit bits. And that is because 8 bits already gives you around 256 combinations. So there really isn't any conceivable need to have more than that. Uh, unless you want something really secure for whatever reason. But I would argue 256 is secure enough for most Minecraft application. So for this output, we have a repeater going into a block and a redstone torch. This is just what I'm using. Uh, the redstone torch will turn on when the system is triggered, and I'm just gonna use a redstone lamp to signify when the system is triggered. So now let's go test this out uh, with our transmitter. So we want on, off, on, on, off, on, off. So. Let's see if it works. So the reason that failed would be that I'm an idiot and I put in the code wrong. So that should actually be the code. And now if I press the button, we should see these this lamp turn on. And we don't because I am still a complete idiot. Well... It turns out, for some reason, that entirely baffles me. The reason that was not working is because I had blocks in each of these positions. If I run this with those blocks there, you can see that none of the redstone lamps for any of my testing circuits, I just added a few more with structure blocks for testing purposes, uh, none of those work. But if I get rid of these blocks then it works perfectly fine I am entirely baffled as to why that makes any difference whatsoever but if your system's not working try that <laughs> I, I guess that matters <laughs> So that is all I've got for you guys today. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, consider subscribing and leave a like. I'll see you all next time.